welcome you to this 41st edition of Thursday Musings. Next slide, please. So it is my pleasure and honor to introduce our chairperson of the program, Professor Topan Pati sir. He's from Qatar, National Advisory Board Member of IAPP, Chairman, Membership Subcommittee of IPS, Life Fellow, IIUPM and UK uh, chapter, organized ANSIP's choice, private psychiatry conference, industrial psychiatry, multiple conferences. He has exceptional organizational skills and he's also organizing the seminar. Can we brief for us? Yeah. <laughs> sir, many, many new people are there today, so I thought. Yeah. So I, I so now I, I uh, uh, brief and so, so he is well known to all the people in psychiatry circles. Uh, he is winner of Madhu Swabhiman Four Avenue Service Award with multiple. Uh, he is associated with multiple social organizations. Sir, welcome and uh, over to you, sir. Thank you, Adim, for an elaborate introduction, and I take this privilege to welcome all the participants in this webinar who are uh, to join our show and welcome Dr. Sashadri with a great gratitude and respect. With us, you have got Dr. Amrit Pat Joshi, who is the moderator and his organizer since the outset of this Thursday Musing. He is a psychotherapist and wellness consultant. He is professor of psychiatry in high-tech medical college and is consultant in Amari Hospital and Healing Touch Clinic. He is direct council member of Indian Psychiatric Society and he's the editor of Odisha Journal of Psychiatry, which is indexed. And he has been the chief coordinator of UNICEF WHO IPS Initiative on Telemedicine on Psychosocial Management during COVID-19. And we have with us Dr. Alim Siddiqui, who has been introducing me, Nawab from Lucknow, the neuropsychiatrist, psychotherapist, and wellness consultant. He's a professor and chief consultant neuropsychiatrist at He's director of Healthy Minds Neuropsychiatry Behavioral Sciences Center. He's a visiting professor of psychiatry, ERAS Lucknow Medical College, Hospital Lucknow, and GSBM Medical College, Kanpur. He's the past director council member of IPS, just completed his tenure. He's a guest faculty in Amit University, Lucknow, and he is the finance secretary of IMA Lucknow Brats and IAPP UP plus UK chapter. Ali, welcome. And we have to introduce the two chairpersons, the ever dynamic, vibrant Dr. Sanjay Gupta from Banaras, Senior Professor of Psychiatry, Department of Psychiatry, Institute of Medical Sciences, Banaras, Indian University, Baranasi. He has been the coordinator of BHS Stress Management and Counseling Center. He is the Journal Representative of IPS Central Journal. Welcome, Dr. Sanjay Gupta. And with us, we have got young, smart Dr. Shobit Gar from Dehradun. He, has, uh, he is an alumnus of JSS Medical College Mysore as MBBS and he has done MD DPM in CIP Ranchi. He is Associate Professor of Psychiatry at the Guru Ram Rai Institute of Medical and Health Sciences, Patel Nagar, Deradun, Uttarakhand. He has a number of presentations and publications to his credit. Welcome, Dr. Sobit. You will be rewarded by having the two chairpersons with us. And over to the chairpersons. Now the webinar belongs to the chairpersons. Welcome. Uh, thank you, sir. Thank you. Just to set the motion, I would like to thank at the outset uh, Dr. Pratham Patishkar for the introducing me and my beloved seniors, Dr. Aleem and Dr. Amrit sir, to give an opportunity to chair the session among such an august gathering and such an important and important pertinent subject. Uh, I would like to bring to, to delegates notice that Spanish flu in 1918 was affected around 500 million population, around one third of the, of, of the population. And it, it, it was a result of which 50 million people had uh, were, were, were killed. And unfortunately, we have reached one third of the milestone. Spanish flu, as we all know, came in three waves and second wave was the most vigorous as, a, as in current times. It did stricken a lot of panic at default and created mass hysteria and xenophobia to say the least. Now, last year gave us a prevalent fear of being labeled stigma in quarantine isolation. But this second wave has probably gifted us the fear of lack of beds, doctors, oxygen, and medication lack. So, you know, it, it is in society, we have differing tolerance and certainty levels. So without much ado, I would like to request my senior co-chair to introduce the speaker and commence the session. Thank you. 
thank you, uh, Dr. Shobit. Uh, thank you, Dr. Tofan Pati, the chairman. Thank you, Dr. Aleem, Dr. Amrit Patil Joshi. I'm especially thankful to Dr. Tofan Pati for asking me to chair this particular 41st edition of the Thursday Musings because uh, we have a phenomenal topic which is of utmost importance for today. And today, uh, you say there's, there's a whole lot of confusion. And uh, if I say, you know, can we find one word that, is, that will fit today's scenario? Well, it's very difficult. But then maybe if we tried it, the first, the one word that will fit in is uh, uncertainty. And this uncertainty is all about, you know, becoming positive or finding a doctor, finding a bed, finding oxygen, finding injections, finding ventilator support. You know, you mentioned, you, you, you think of it, everything is uncertain. So much, there's so many beds and so many vaccinations are being tried all over. The government is trying its very best. But among the masses, there is a, a phenomenal degree of uncertainty. And today I'd like to introduce to all of you the distinguished members and the distinguished guests who have joined this 41st edition of Thursday Musings. I'd like to introduce Dr. Shekhar Sheshad. He will be speaking on intolerance of uncertainty. And he's a master on that. He's been working on that. Since last year, he has a whole lot of ideas and I'm quite sure we, we'd love to listen to him. It would, would be a very great privilege to listen to his thoughts. Dr. Sheshkar Sheshavri does not need any introduction, but for formality's sake, he's a graduate of Maulana Azad Medical College, Delhi. Uh, he's a postgraduate from Nimhans, Bangalore. Currently, he's a senior professor at the Department of Child and Adolescent Psychiatry. And he's also the dean of behavioral sciences at Nimhans, Bangalore. Besides working with child and adolescent mental health, including developmental disabilities, he's actively involved in the areas of gender and sexualities, violence, trauma, and ab uh, abuse children in different, difficult circumstances, juvenile justice, experiential methodologies, school programs, teacher training in life skills education, community and school mental health programs, forum theater, qualitative research. I mean, you mention it and he is into it. So without wasting any uh, further time, I'm quite sure you're, you're very eager to listen to Dr. Shekhar Sheshadri. Very warm welcome to you, Dr. Shekhar Sheshadri. Thank you for joining us on the 41st edition. Over to you. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Dr. Sanjay, and thank you very much, uh, Shobit. And um, Tofan, sir, uh, Amrit, as always, uh, Janab Alim, uh, all uh, good friends. Sabse pehle saathiyo, I'd like to say two or three things before I get, on to, get down to the substance of what I want to share with you. In March of this year, it was exactly one year that uh, the pandemic kind of hit and the lockdown started. As Shobit pointed out, uh, you know, 100 plus years ago, you know, we have some traces of history I want to draw to your attention that when the first wave came, it was the elderly with comorbidities who were our source of concern. And what has happened in the second wave is healthy adults are being affected and succumbing amidst the gamut and list of contexts in which uncertainties occur, which Dr. Sanjay Gupta has alluded to comprehensively in his introductory remarks. This is not to 
sound as any foretelling of a voice of doom, but public health dictates that the third wave will hit in October and November and no prices for guessing who's going to be affected because the virus has to find a susceptible host. And who are they going to be, friends? They're going to be children, unvaccinated, because the zero to 18 vaccine is still under trial. No regulatory body will allow for. Therefore, the best public health approach is common sense and the best vaccine is a mask. Having said this, I want to make two other opening remarks. One is that I'm acutely aware that many of our fraternity have been personally affected by the pandemic, their family members have been affected. Many of our fraternity have been hospitalized. Many of them have needed respiratory assistance in ICU care. Many of them have touched the brink and come back. Many of us have lost family members. And this saga is going to continue amidst all the struggles that Sanjay Gupta referred to. I want to take a moment to basically recognize the distress and pain that many of us have experienced, including the pain of loss and grief. And just take a moment's silence to share with you all that we have endured, all that we have suffered, and all that we have lost. Thank you very much. The second is not exactly a disclaimer. As uh, Dr. Vishal points out in chat, that some of these predictions sound scary, but they are an important reminder. And therefore, whatever I wish to say today is in no way intended to trivialize the reality of the experiences that many of you have endured and the reality of the assistance that you have to provide to many of your clients who have endured similar experiences and challenges that. So when I will speak of some of the fundamentals of intolerance of anxiety and refer to scripts and scriptures that go back to 3,000, 4,000 years, which have philosophical origins. This is in no way to intellectualize this debate and in no way intended to trivialize the reality of the pain. It is only intended to provide a framework of reference for us to navigate this crisis that we are in. And this pandemic is now an, a humanitarian crisis. It is not just an ordinary pandemic anymore. It's a, it's a complex humanitarian crisis and it's an emergency. As has again been pointed out uh, in chat, yes, the feeling of grief is very painful for other family members. So we are in a crisis. And I'll be mentioning a lot of this only as a method to provide a scaffolding to ride the second wave, navigate the third, perhaps even the fourth and fifth, till the virus and its mut mutations lose their potency. More and more people get vaccinated. We reach her herd immunity. And if history is any indication that's likely to take perhaps the next two or three years, uh, and that's the time frame. So please mark the narrative has changed. The narrative one year ago was how long will this go on? The narrative now is 
this is going to go on for very long, isn't it? The narrative one year ago was when will this end? The narrative now is So ecology, our world has changed. Ecologies have changed. One last thing before I go to slide share. If you ask any human being, how far in the future have you planned and predicted for yourself? COVID notwithstanding, somebody may have told you, I have plans for the next three years. I have completed my master's. I have the resource money to for a startup and I'll see how it goes. Somebody may say, I have planned for 10 years because uh, I, I have got scholarship in aid to do my PhD with the assurance that I'll be taken into a project. But if you ask a stockbroker, he will say two minutes. Because if I make a bad investment, my world can come crumbling in two minutes. I do not make a prediction beyond two minutes. The truth, my friends, is no matter how traffic conscious and law abiding you are, you're always subject to someone else's error of judgment. Does that mean we continue to live in fear? Is there a possibility if we cross the road that a vehicle will come and hit us? Yes, there is a possibility. Does that mean we stop crossing the road? No, we don't. We look to the left, we look to the right, we gauge and we cross. As Shabazz points out in chat, that people are seen calm about the death of near ones in the house, like a mother, a relative. And Shabazz has someone who works on the phone and you know, was treating for the last five days and said very casually, Ki, Ma chal basi, sir, as he anxiously inquired about his phone. It's a, it's a strange emotional reaction. And we all have this kind of emotional reaction that as we try to navigate and make sense that, and which is why Vishal points out that we have to accept that unpredictability is part of life despite all scientific achievements of mankind. Yes, there are structural equation models, mathematical predictions. And I'm going to be alluding to all of that as we go into the substance of what I want to share with you, all 300 of you. Yes, Ishwaran, it's a probabilistic world and we have to realistic, realistically accept risks. So friends, the need for certainty. If you have anxiety or OCD, let's say, it's very common to have an unrealistic need for certainty, even in situations where certainty is not possible. And this need for certainty can lead to seeking excessive reassurance. And when we uncertainty, we have to say that we are dealing with reality. We are dealing with the reality. We are, are we really dealing with the reality or are we dealing with possibility? Now, what is in OCD? Mein hota hai? In OCD, it is not that you're absolutely certain that something will happen, it is the possibility that something will happen that keeps on circling in your mind. Mandrata rehta hai aapki zahin mein. To where the uncertainty of this pandemic is concerned and our own navigation through this, what are the experiences that are in the realm of reality? And look at what Sanjay ji pointed out. When you are on your own, beds are not available, where is oxygen, where is not oxygen. Ventilator will not get a And for some, it is in the realm of possibility. 
we are still okay we are not infected our family is okay but is there a likelihood that it will happen let me take you back many thousands of years the sophists thought vertically in fact they started with certainty they never started with uncertainty and they build their case on top of it socrates on the other hand he thought horizontally he said hum log shuru karte hain mumkinat se sambhavnaon se aisi cheeze jiske bare mein bhavishyavani kar nahi sakte hain with uncertainty and gradually whittling down all possible ideas to arrive at the truth so there's a vast landscape of ideas out there in a, in in our in our responsibility to unearth the falsehoods and discard them so this is the situation with covid we start with the uncertainty you know will i get the infection do i have comorbidity uh, have i been vaccinated have i got the second dose is this a mutant virus is will my vaccination uh, actually protect me from the mutations what if i need hospitalization what if my po2 level falls down which is the hospital nearest to me can i advance book a bed but as we build our networks as we build our information sources we arrive at a certain list of possibilities where we make arrangements for the kind of contingencies that and no matter the extent to which you do it there will always be that small element that is unpredictable and that's what we have to learn how to live it and there's a way to do that and this is exactly what bertrand russell says he says that the value of philosophy lies in its uncertainty ab dikkat kya hai jab hum log certainty ko categories mein dalte hain ki aisa hai yahan milega ye dost meri madad karega that you know you have categorized that but that's not where the value of science lies the value of science lies in the certainty that it provides perhaps of a good cure of good weather on mathematical predictions people do but could people predict that cyclone amphan was going to hit hit west bengal could people predict that the second wave would come down yes it was predicted and the third wave is also predicted and that's where the value of science is that i see that dr apur shivastav uh, has already raised a hand i don't know alim whether uh, that that's a mistake or whether he has something to say perhaps we'll wait till the end but to look at the philosophy of uncertainty and if you look at what brick said much before covid came ye kehte hain ki ये प्रॉबिलिटी वाली जो बात होती है द मैथमेटिकल मॉडल्स द प्रिडिक्शन मॉडल्स इन पब्लिक हेल्थ एंड एपिडीमियोलॉजी एंड स्टेटिस्टिक्स द अप्रोच इज एरिस्टोटल इट्स नॉट सॉक्रेटिक और वो क्या कहते हैं कि सत्य है ट्रूथ एग्जिस्ट वी कैन नो इट बट नॉट ऑलवेज तो अनसर्टनिटी इज इन आर माइंड इट इज नॉट एन ऑब्जेक्ट द अनसर्टनिटी इज नॉट इन द वायरस द वायरस विल म्यूटेट the virus will find susceptible hosts and they are going to be children in the third wave but we also know that for children the symptoms are going to be more gi symptoms rather than respiratory and the trend is already shown here that and sometimes we can measure it and there are good ways and bad ways to do it and this brings me to the whole issue of the wisdom of uncertainty ki dharm ka satya nivas jo hai the true home of dharma 
न यहां है न वहां है अगेन मच बिफोर कोविड बुद्धिस्ट रिव्यू में हम uh, गौतम जी की जब बात करते हैं when his search for enlightenment began when he left home ab you know hum, hum, we are modern people we travel so easily now we may not appreciate the weight of this decision in his time we're talking friends of 6th century bc when most people never even ventured further than a few miles from their birthplace aapko aashcharya hoga nalanda mein padhne ke liye us zamane mein log jab aate the when people came to the university in nalanda they walked for 3 years or 4 years or 5 years to study for 6 years and then walk back for another 5 years this was the kind of dharma that existed then so liminality goes against the grain the more uncertain our lives become in response to events beyond our control the more we want to plant our field solidly in one place so where does that leave risk takers a covid se pehle log mount everest kyu chadhte hain racing car kyu chalate hain under water deep sea diving kyu karte hain dimag kharab hai kya aapka you know that you will die if there's an avalanche or you have frostbite or uh, altitude altitude sickness so there are different kinds of people there are some uh, and it's this is not just about an adrenaline rush or a rush or, or, or pathology i'm not pathologizing risk takers i'm just saying that there are many ways of being and existing and the choice is with you this does not mean risk taking does not mean in the current pandemic that you don't sanitize you don't maintain a distance you don't wear a mask and you go around you know all over and that's not what i'm saying but you know it, it it's it's a balance between these safety precautions but dealing with your uncertainty in a way that you're not paralyzed by the kind of uncertainty that the pandemic brings so if you look at what the royal society said they said that perceived uncertainty or personal uncertainty are associated with numerous psychological responses and at the very least these responses are unhelpful and they are counterproductive because they are a bias against creativity when it is needed most and and it's a threat to cooperation and worst of all there is a propensity towards violence either self inflicted or or, or otherwise that uh, ali would you please note that uh, i think ramesh mohan bhai has also raised his hand perhaps they have questions or things to contribute if you could register that and take it when you curate the uh, session after my presentation is over Sure, sir. Thank you. So, so one request: please don't raise your hands or post queries now. Let sir finish, then we can take questions and queries. It's a request to everybody. It's distracting and uh, stopping the flow actually. So please. So the presence of scientific uncertainty: ki kitne din chalega, mutations kitni hongi, will the vaccine work or not? Uh, the Lancet report says that antibody titers will be higher if you take for if you take the dosage six to eight weeks, even twelve weeks after the first dose. But all of us took it after four weeks now. So the the presence of scientific uncertainty does not just reveal a lack of knowledge, but in many cases, it's a mathematical expression of the knowledge that we have. So let's understand this difference. It's not a lack of knowledge. now friends look at the variety of uncertainty this is not just about covid rational argumentation against uncertainty a taxonomy and treatment of uncertainty for ecology and conservation biology how not to theorize about the language of subjective uncertainty uncertain science uncertain world uncertainty in economics varieties of uncertainty monitoring decision making under great uncertainty the politics of uncertainty and conceptions of science 
responsibly managing uncertainty in clinical ethics, decisions under imperfect knowledge. And a lot of these, we are talking about not just the COVID. This is 1996. And Socrates and, and Buddha was several thousand and, 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 and Buddha was like 6th century BC. So to come back to the core construct, ki ye hai kya? what is intolerance of uncertainty? And this is the classical Boswell et al. definition. And their contention is that it's a common factor in all kinds of emotional problems, whether it's, sorry, whether it's anxiety or whether it's... And Boswell et al. say that, that it is a characteristic predominantly... Uh, Ma'am, I'm in a session, I'll call you back. Uh, is predominantly associated with generalized anxiety or OCD, but it's probably a shared element, not necessarily of disorders, but of emotional states. So the question is, is it only anxiety or is it a shared element? And the answer is, it can be observed across problem areas in transdiagnostic treatment and in the current pandemic context, is not just about disorder and treatment. It's about our lives. So the unified protocol for transdiagnostic treatment states that what we need to do is really look at restructuring our appraisals. Or hum kis khabar ki ka istamal kar rahe hain. And how do we source information? How do we process it? And how do we use it to lead our daily lives and to plan for, for the month, the week, the next month? You know, if there's a lockdown, how do we plan for that in a manner that, you know, the panic comes down? So this is not just about anxiety, but it's about any problem area in our life which has strong emotional components. Therefore, conceptually, intolerance of uncertainty is well suited to address a shared feature because the focus is on commonly employed experiential control strategies. What is the structure of our worry? What is the structure of our rituals? Our safety signals kya hain? How do we appraise situations? How do we avoid situations? What are the kind of things that trigger experiences of uncertainty in us? And if we recognize this, then it becomes easy to navigate the second wave then. So individuals high in intolerance of uncertainty find situations that are uncertain, threatening, upsetting, undesirable, regardless of the actual probability of a negative event to occur. Suna hai ki vaccination hone ke baujud bhi infection hone ke chances hai. Mild symptoms hoga kehte hai, but I have mild comorbidity. What if it is not mild? So the extent to which you look at possibility, probability is actually related as Dugas points out, ki ye char factors jo hai, that contribute to the development and maintenance of worry, intolerance of uncertainty, our beliefs about worry, a negative problem orientation and cognitive avoidance. Very simply stated, what this means, just, this is just an example. That, you know, this was done in the youth, but you know, one can generalize from this. 
that negative problem orientation mediates the path from intolerance of uncertainty to worry to aapke samne chunauti hai ek challenge hai you have a problem in front of you what is your orientation towards that problem and a negative orientation means i don't know what this is about i cannot deal with it um and a non negative orientation means here is my social circle here are my resources let me speak to so and so let me get this clarity here is my network if you don't have this non negative orientation then your uncertainty shifts into worry and further it structures the issue that stress does not necessarily affect children or adults in the same way some people are more reactive to stress and more importantly may react more negatively than others to stress resulting from much of the uncertainty to ek jagah stress hai chahe pandemic as a larger universal stress or stress because a family member is infected you are infected stress that you are infected you are in quarantine uh, you are monitoring your oxygen levels you don't know whether you stress because a someone in the extended family has unfortunately passed away and how are you appraising the stress what kind of social support do you have given the resources you have at hand what is the level of predictability that you have over your circumstances and aapka basic temperament kaisa hai it is a combination of this that leads some people to react more negatively to stress resulting from uncertainty than others so right now the pandemic is a universal experience and many of us present here in the session today have directly or indirectly personally or in the extended family experienced this how does this get compounded and what has happened particularly where children is concerned is that there is loss of routine loss of predictability loss of control loss of learning context loss of peer interaction loss of social spaces and loss of play in order to mitigate the compounding effect of uncertainty you create rituals where you reinstate routine allow for predictability give family members some decision making powers create joyous systems of learning introduce play at home even if it is on social media keep extended family interaction going and keep in touch with social spaces virtually and your uncertainty comes down some final thoughts and this is the most wonderful piece from the center for informed futures the university uh, of auckland where they speak about social cohesion in the post covid world jab bhi covid khatam hoga iski samapti jab bhi hogi how do we envision that and what uh, uh, heorang hua says in this monograph is that once social cohesion is lost it becomes exceedingly difficult to restore especially when there's both increased uncertainty and new forms of inequality let's not forget friends that pandemics of the nature of covid have a disproportionate impact on vulnerable populations daily wage workers migrant workers and there are shadow pandemics that have started poverty children's uh, issues and this whole answer these are shadow pandemics now social cohesion my submission to you should be the cornerstone of this new scaffolding because what has covid done covid has ruptured our existing world 
So if we move to respond to our altered ecology, both our external ecology and our internal ecology in the minds, it calls for resets. And the reset has to be, uh, and, and the word rupture is deliberate because it signals an inflection point where both opportunities and risks multiply. So how do you do this reset? The reset is done in these five ways. And indeed, Thursday musings is a wonderful example of how you create a sense of belonging to a wider community. Of trust, of common respect, of our civic needs. And this is why these kind of meetings and these kind of dialogues and discussions are, are, are so essential. And how do we create more and more such networks of belonging? Inclusion, which involves equity of opportunities and of outcomes. Whether it's labor market participation, ho, income, ho, education, ho, health, ho, housing, ho. what is happening to the market spaces? You know, your ap bhaji wala jo hai. How are their lives? And, and what are we doing in our small ways? Those of us who are not in lockdown, yeah, Bangalore is in lockdown right now, up to 12, perhaps it may be extended, but we have a margin from six o'clock to 10 o'clock in the morning where we go shopping to our local bazaar, local heart, hum log jate hai. Unki hai. And you know, do we look at the lives of these people to look at what is the best way in which we can create an equity of opportunities? How do we create participation in social activities and community groups in our little gated communities, in our mohalla, even if it is virtual? How do we recognize and value diversity Khaskar ki jo marginalized populations hai. And the legitimacy in public institutions that act to protect the rights and interests and to mediate conflicts. These are the five principles of social cohesion. And if you actually look at the UN policy brief, on COVID-19 and the need for action on mental health. This was on 13th of May last year. This may it'll be exactly one year uh, when the Lancet Commission on Global Mental Health you know, quoted this. And they said ki, mental health problems are on a continuum from mild and time-limited distress to severe mental health conditions. And the COVID-19 pandemic influences where are situated on that continuum. Now, what has happened is that the pandemic has actually generated multiple stresses. stresses. Those who had few experiences of anxiety and distress may have an increased number in this. And some may have developed mental health conditions. Or, or those who previously had a mental health condition may experience a worsening of their condition and reduced function. So, during the COVID-19 emergency, this whole uncertainty that we are talking about, आखिर डर क्या है इंफेक्शन का डर है मृत्यु के बारे में भय है कि फैमिली मेंबर्स हम खो जाएंगे फॉर मेनी पीपल इट्स अबाउट लाइवलीहुड्स इट्स अबाउट बीइंग सोशली आइसोलेटेड अबाउट सेपरेशन बट फॉर वल्नरेबल पॉपुलेशन इट्स आल्सो अबाउट इंक्रीज रिस्क्स ऑफ डोमेस्टिक वायलेंस एंड अब्यूज एंड अनसर्टेनटी अबाउट द फ्यूचर स्कूल कब खुलेगा कॉलेज कब खुलेगा एग्जिट एग्जाम्स कब होंगे इंजीनियरिंग मिलेगा कि नहीं uh, will we have a gap here? And you know, these are the kind of uncertainties that people are dealing with that. And the only way that can be addressed is by conversations. And this is why if you really want to examine the long term impact of the crisis on people's mental health and in turn the mental health impact on society. When the economic crisis was you know, what was called as the deaths of despair in, in working age Americans. And you know the risk of self-harm and, and substance use. 
related mortality. They were linked to loss of hope because unemployment rising equality. Or just COVID-19 ki arthik, uske arthik boj jo hai, the economic burden rises, is going to take a toll on people's mental health and major impact on families and wider society, which means that little, little actions, choti choti hamare reaching out and touching people's life is what restores uh, hope in people. And we call this solidarity. I'm seeing that Dr. Shrinivas Murthy is also in this sector. Many years ago, uh, you know, during the Bhopal gas disaster and also after the Gujarat earthquake, I often recall many uh, conversations with him, you know, where we spoke about the spectrum of public health, public mental health interventions in situations of disaster, that at one level, you're there to do depth therapy for people with severe PTSD and all that. At a second level, counseling interventions for people with anxiety and so on. At a third level, to meet the developmental needs of human beings, of children. At a fourth level, to structure their lives and structure that routine. But at a fifth level, your presence there is to express solidarity. Because the positive observations on solidarity may not endure if people lose hope and become intolerant to physical distancing measures. But the experience is that all communities have helpful embedded resources that need to be supported. And it's important now more than ever to activate and support these local support, especially for marginalized people and encourage a spirit of community self-help to protect and promote mental health being. Thank you, my friends. Thank you, thank you, uh, thank you very much, uh, Dr. Shikhar Sushnabri. I think uh, it's been a real uh, uh, food for thought to really dwelled into the subject. And uh, before I hand it over for the questions, I'd just like to uh, reiterate some of the important points that you've mentioned so that those people who are with us, whatever queries they have, whatever they would like to discuss, they can uh, put that in. Uh, well, you said that it, uh, Corona is not going away soon. Uh, it's going to take now, you know, some years now. And uh, unpredictability is part of life. The uh, sophist you mentioned, the Socrates mentioned. Then Bertrand Russell, Aristotle, Briggs, Buddha search. Buddha search. And uh, uh, the Buddha search for enlightenment, you said 6 BC. And very right you are, very few people, you know, moved around and his quest for enlightenment was really, I mean, that is why um, uh, he, he, is, he set up a phenomenal religion. And finally, you said there are different kinds of people, there are different types of existence. You mentioned about the Heisenberg's principle, the variety of uncertainty, you also mentioned the unified protocol for the transdiagnostic treatment of emotional disorders. One very important concept that you mentioned was the possibility, the probability, and the appraisal and the temperaments, how they get involved in the negative problem orientation. Finally, what you said uh, in your very clear and very succinct lecture was, you have to reinstate the life routine. You have to restore social cohesion because the impact is disproportionate. It's not affecting everybody in the same way. Uh, the five elements you said to restore certainty and to bring us out uh, of this crisis is 
a sense of belonging, inclusion, participation, recognition, and finally legitimacy of the institution. So with, uh, with so many multiple stressors being generated, I'm quite sure with such an exhaustive lecture, I'm quite sure that people are there with a lot of questions and Dr. Amrit is ready with all the questions. Yeah, over to Dr. Amrit for the question and answer session. Thank you very much, Dr. Shekhar. Wonderful lecture, wonderful. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Alim is always ready with the questions. Amrit is just a <laughs> trapper boy. So, so there's a there's a there's a good. I'll start with the question that Dr. T. Sudhir has asked, and it's a very pertinent question. Now that a group of psychiatrists had come out with a letter, open letter, which we read in the you know everywhere it was being flashed, that media guidelines for the reporting of what has happened. So there's a question by Dr. T. Sudhir, which is very very pertinent. There are media guidelines for suicide reporting. Shouldn't there be a similar guideline for media reporting during this pandemic? A major contributing factor for increasing the anxiety and fear might be the seeing of you know hundreds of cremations going on, the lines in front of hospitals, people gasping for oxygen, and whatnot. So should should it be should the media play that everything is all good, or should the media come out with what are the facts? Where and who decides where the lines are drawn? Actually, Dr. Shashad. Yeah, um, Amrit, thank you, sir, Sudhir, uh, very much for, uh, as Amrit pointed out, this letter was actually jointly signed by Dr. B. N. Gangadhar, Dr. Pratima Murthy, Dr. Gautam Saha, and Dr. Rajesh Sagar. Um, and uh, it is available uh, in, in public domain. I think Amrit would be happy to send it across that uh, uh, perhaps uh, the IPS media wing should... Uh, you know, consider taking aspects of the letter and, uh, uh, but uh, the issue uh, is COVID has become such an international um, event, shall we say, that there are guidelines that are coming about responsible uh, reportage, but Every time we report, there is a new twist and a new turn that is taking place. And uh, maintaining the balance often becomes kind of difficult. But I think uh, that public letter that was put out kind of succinctly put what kind of uh, media approaches and, and some ideas about how the media could you know, actually, which aspects should be reported and how so that it, it creates at least to some extent a sense of ease in the kind of people uh, who it, it seeks to address. Thank you, sir. Uh, uh, sir, I have a very basic question. Uh, how do I tolerate this uncertainty? As I pointed out, uh, uncertainty has certain contexts. It is uh, not an amorphous experience. Uh, it has a context and, and it has certain thought processes that it is this aspect that I'm, is, you know, it's, uh, that I'm uncertain about that. And when we look at uh, creating structures of clarification, creating structures of support, and we also balance our experience of uncertainty by actually reaching out and touching the lives of people who perhaps do not have the bandwidth because they are dealing with something immediate that it sort of balances the impact that our own experience of uncertainty has not that it goes away but it's pretty much sim similar to a basic principle of chemistry of uh, that if you put a molecule of gas in a fixed container, it expands to fill that container. But if you put a molecule of another gas, the relative space that it occupies becomes less. That So when you put in your consciousness many other aspects of thought processes or experiences and other things that you do, it's, it's not... Uh, that the experience of uncertainty goes away, but its relative impact reduces. 
and then you do something directly to address the uncertainty itself so that's how i, uh, I would approach it uh, dr alim dr dr alim i'll just take it the question from here sir we had the ipl which was going around so you know one newspaper took a stand that we will not report anything about the ipl we will share stories about people who are doing good there a lot of hue and cry how can cricketers play you know it, it was it was a very sad state because we have cricketers who have their family members who were also suffering and i think that was a four hour distraction for many you know it's not just cricketers a lot of i see kids also watching people looking for dhoni to come out virat kohli somebody is looking at kane williamson and then suddenly everybody was clamoring that ipl should be stopped ipl should be stopped so actually we were having four hours of distraction like you told our conscious effort was more on the cricket or something which is away from the death the 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 havoc that was being played around so so we we just cannot understand the mentality of people here you know we get something where which we can just you know like like people have been asking sometimes it's just few minutes of solas without even a single mention of the word covid so certain such events are they important or are they not important in in, in these type of you know situation uh, amrit it's it's see it's a matter of balance let me t- 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 tell you two scenarios sometimes what happens is that itni badi mahamari itni badi uh, mahamari hai itna uh, bada vishay duniya mein chal raha hai aur aur aap log khel rahe hain so so there is a tendency therefore to be judgmental that on the other hand whether it is a pandemic or whether it is a a, a, a country that goes to long strife due to extended um internal warfare or or extended uh, what suffers of the social sciences and the arts and the aesthetics that so the point is does one stop living life and deriving pleasure from the possibilities of of life this is not to say become callous or become insensitive to the suffering around you but this is also not to say that you need to become paralyzed and as to be constantly thinking of uh, what one particular so this balance is often difficult to and i i think that maintaining in a situation like this maintaining one's meditative mindfulness practices maintaining one's silence maintaining one's connection with extended family maintaining one's hobbies whether they are writing or whether they are singing or whether they are drawing and maintaining your social obligations and tasks and responsibilities creates that balance the the relative valence may differ you know how much of uh, so so one is not saying that you are spending 23 hours of the day in self indulgent entertainment and you are hardly looking at you know so there is that extreme on the other hand there are covid warriors you know who are living breathing and dying in in the situation that you know so there are these kind of so the choice that once once one makes about what defines my sense of connection with this unusual time in humanity and mankind which you know, none of us have experienced that and we have to find a path and a balance that is comforting to our sense of personal ethic so there is nothing wrong in finding soothing activities for ourselves and so it's a question of maintaining uh, that balance that and it's also a question of of time that uh, you know somebody said you know i have to explain things to i know how do i explain to people that uh and and how do i convey bad news and you know how do i talk and so all these are processes 
and 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 the word process and and processes is exceedingly important hamari hum teen cheezon ko hamesha kehte hain kriya prakriya aur pratikriya hamari jitni bhi prakriyaen agar wo hamari jitni bhi pratikriyaen hain wo agar prakriyatmak ho if our responses are process based so if we are trying to explain to a family member we explain the realities ki ye situation hai ye kar rahe hain yahan itna available hai uh, so it's not that you give them telegraphic information no information or you're overwhelming them with too much of information that doesn't make sense so how do you make that balance that so somebody said i'm a third year pg and you know i don't know that i'm and i'm always reminded of what emily dickinson uh, said and i never lose an opportunity to see, you know when about breaking bad news um, in fact uh, uh, we are going to be starting a a series on 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 covid very soon uh, and i'm going to uh, take the opportunity actually you know to put on uh, chat uh, some of our links and we're going to be starting um, this pretty soon so what emily dickinson says is tell all the truth but tell it slant success in circuit lies too bright for our infirm delight the truths superb surprise as lightning to the children eased with explanation kind the truth must dazzle gradually else every man be blind tell all the truth but tell it slant success in circuit lies too bright for our infirm delight the truth's superb surprise as lightning to the children eased with explanation kind the truth must dazzle gradually else every man be blind sampurna sach bolo lekin thoda tircha bolo kyunki sach you know <laughs> so that's how uh, the our, our approach and how we orient ourselves needs to be you know really calibrated uh, again uh, amrit uh, alim tofan um, i see that there are so many uh, comments and so many questions um uh, and i would be happy for, i would be happy for you to save all this and send it to me and as always i am happy to subject it to my analyst we'll take few questions sir we'll take fast some questions tell him sharda doctor yeah sharda has a question uh, she is one of our persons who is behind this show so i'll take her question alin then you can take the other questions sure. so many many parents during this time are more worried about education of the children rather than the emotional needs Now, what should be our approach i think a question answered there's an answer in a question but then your take on it sir uh, it's very interesting uh, amrit that this question has come up uh, i would like to draw your attention uh, to a program called mano darpan which is hosted by ncert and i had done a session for them in uh, in march uh, please do uh, uh, check out ncert manodarpan on on youtube to usme education ko leke maine do teen sankshit mein baatein uh, kahi thi uh, covid not withstanding covid ko to chhodiye uh, i said i had written a newspaper piece once where i said rejoice its examination time funny isn't it nobody ever thought of examinations as a joyous experience there's always a sense of doom disaster and finality around it whereas examinations should actually be a celebration of learning and it never is because you create this uh, you know tension about so process is trivialized over outcome effort is trivialized over performance that so there's no joy in learning and professor yashpal many years ago when he brought out a document called learning without burden he called this as the tyranny of rote learning and i add to that the tyranny of expectations schools must be 
you know, joyous spaces. Education must be a joyous experience. And this is where, if you look at it in the context of the National Education Policy 2020, uh, now NEP 2020 is a very complex document to navigate. But Sankship, they have said, let people take gap years. We want to build skills for citizenship. And there indeed lies the purpose of education. It's not about numeracy and literacy. It's not about livelihood and you know, entrance exam and INI CET, which has been postponed. Uh, and all of that is all right. I'm not taking away from the importance of that. Somebody said the true purpose of education is, is to help children learn how to learn. But, you know, I say to you that the true purpose of education is the development of an egalitarian personhood. Ek saman adhikari vyaktitva ka vikas, the development of a socially responsive and responsible citizen. Nagrikta, jo jagrit hai. And the development of an identity that is imbued with aesthetic sensibility. Kala, kalpana, sangeet, rangmanj. Prakriti, Rishte, Pyar, Vatsalya. All the rest is only superstructure. Children are hardwired, you know, to. So I think we need to re-image. And what the word I refer to was reset. A reset is required now. To start. We have to make a lot of resets in our lives and it can be done easily. That's the point I'm making. Over to you, Amrit. Uh, sir, this reset, I think reset, uh, easy for uh, maybe you, maybe us, but what should we advise the general public? Reset is very difficult for them. Reset, it is hitting the reset button is the most difficult task. Because they are wanting oxygen cylinders, they are wanting injections, they are wanting admission. So let me put in this perspective to the audience that we are not dealing with the, those things. Uh, as a mental health professional, hum, uh, sir, uh, uh, I'd like you to suggest a few very simple tips. Like you said, you enable social uh, circle to enable kare, enrich. Kare. How do you react or respond to the situation? You identify your own personality traits and then respond. So, sir, on these lines, uh, for people in general who are not mental health professionals, we can understand what we can do to make our own people in the contact with our own people can help us. Janab, let me address this from a point that uh, actually Rupik has raised on chat also ki, Jo log jaise doctor vagara hai, health professionals jo COVID uh, wards mein vagara kaam kar rahe hai, uh, and you know, unki paristhiti kya hai, and you know, what are they supposed to reset? And you have spoken about the lives uh, of the average man out there, just um, you know, hum aam admi ya, ya awam jin ko hum kehte hai, that uh, what is the kind of reset and, uh, and uh, even before COVID, uh, the world order is such as that the, the what is called a, as the two societies, you know, the very divisive that uh, uh, the, the super rich uh, and, you know, and, and, and the really poor and this larger central, uh, you, you know, middle class and all that. And, and it, it's all fine to say, uh, talk about reset, but what, what is the possible reset that... Uh, uh, you know, for an average man uh, out there. Dr. Alim, there are, there is a systemic way, you know, and one can talk about scale. If scale, then what is the kya hai? Because we are a country of, you know, 1.4 billion. So, you know, you talk to scale that. And I have often found that jo log scale ki baat karte hain, or uspe vaad vivaad charcha bhin abhipray and debate and ad nauseum, they basically end up doing nothing. Or jo log scale ki baat nahi karte hain, and they said ki hum aam admi ki reset jo hai, 
वो हम छोटे छोटे चीजों पे करेंगे स्टार्टिंग विद द लेडी हु कम्स टू क्लीन माय हाउस एंड माय कुक एंड दैट बॉय हु वॉशेज माय कार एंड आई विल डू वट एवर असिस्टेंस तो इफ दैट लेडी इज अदर देन माय हाउस वर्किंग इन थ्री अदर हाउसेस एंड दैट वन पर्सन हु वाज पॉजिटिव इन दैट हाउस डिड नॉट बॉदर टू टेल हर दैट वन ऑफ देम वाज पॉजिटिव एंड अलाउड हर टू कम एंड गेट एक्सपोज एंड देन द सोसाइटी केम टू नो एंड दे क्वारंटीन एंड हु विल डू द रैपिड एंटीजन एंड इफ नेसेसरी द आरटीपीसीआर फॉर दिस पर्सन फॉर हर एंजाइटी which is at a level to get reset and i think that there are people looking after me so i take her to my hospital get the rapid antigen done and assure her and said that because you've been exposed don't come for work rather than saying ki aap mask pehniye main mask pehn to mere ghar mein hai mera kaam kijiye no cutting of pay that see what has happened to people that people in the first wave daily wage workers were not allowed inside and then when they came for the salary you know they were not allowed inside that how are they supposed to that so the resets occur exactly as the university of auckland said it occurs by social cohesion to ye wahi baat hai janab alim jo jo black and white ke zamane mein saath hi haath badhana saath hi re saath hi haath badha ek akela reh jaye to you know ये समय, ये समय आ गया है हाथ बढ़ा नया ये नया दौर था ये अभी भी वो नया दौर आया सर 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 वाज टॉकिंग अबाउट नया दौर लास्ट ईयर व्हेन वी हैड द लॉकडाउन शटडाउन वी हैड लॉट ऑफ टिकटॉक्स डांस वीडियोस पीपल कुकिंग शेयरिंग यू नो कॉफी टाइम एवरीबॉडी शोइंग देयर टैलेंट देयर पैशन देयर इंटरेस्ट वी वी सॉ अ लॉट ऑफ बट दिस दिस वेव द सेकंड वेव हैज बीन मोर डिवेस्टेटिंग यू नो वी आर नॉट सीइंग Absolutely. So there's a, there has been a change in the way people have reacted. The pay, what 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 is the you know how do we deal with this second wave actually in terms of the men? I and I am pretty sure that the mental health issues arising out of the second wave will be devastating. Sir. Preparation nahi tha Amrit. Preparation nahi tha. There was complacency, and what what happened was. Uh, Uh, super super spreading event started and you know and this is why we have to be very careful about education and opening of schools in order to prepare for the third wave because children are going to be affected this is not the time to open schools they are super sp- spreading events that uh, so people became complacent you know so uh, uh, w- what was good about the first wave was that we were in a contained environment the whole country was in a lockdown and then phase wise jab khula so people became complacent mask was utar gaye party shaadi shuru ho gayi balle balle ho gaya and uh, and then the, in the mutation started travel started that so we know this you know the, the pandemic that shobit spoke about in his intro spanish we know this yaar so saal pehle yahi to hua tha and we have not learned there is no better public health approach as my colleague and teacher dr v ravi who retired as senior professor of virology says there is no better public health approach than common sense and there is no better vaccine than the mask jahan apne woh mask utara that so i think it's a question of preparation see this will be tided over as every virus is it will take its toll as every disaster does that it takes its toll but i i think that we need to uh, you know uh, understand this and uh, get into a preparation but to tide over so that the october november wave we are prepared in advance uh, may it be known that on 6th of may i have stated this on this public forum and spread the word around there all those who work with children and because uh, but the symptoms will be more gi this is the because we are already seeing it in in this in the second wave so let's recognize this and and prepare for it so that we don't have super spreading events and if we practice this basic public health thing we'll be able to tide it over so there is an important question regarding the same uh, in the chat box 
covid appropriate behavior in children so how do we teach the children because uh, they might not understand the restrictions and we might be uh, uh, provoking more of anxiety in them by telling them the truth so what is the approach we follow the basic uh, we keep it simple uh, in fact uh, ministry of health uh, ne jab choti choti videos pehle nikali thi to you know kareeb 1 2 minute ka i had done a piece then it's it's probably time to uh, revive that piece again uh, you know where uh, it's about uh, basic hygiene or public health ki jab hum baat karte hain जैसे बाहर जाके आते हैं क्यों हम लोग हाथ पैर धोते हैं या कोई डस्टिंग वस्टिंग किया उसके बाद यू नो वाई डू वी वॉश अप दैट यू नो वाई डू वी ब्रश आर टीथ दैट एंड सो इट इज जस्ट दैट यू नो व्हेन देयर अ डस्ट स्टॉम वाई डू वी कवर और एंड समटाइम्स डस्ट स्टॉम आर देयर फॉर अ मोमेंट एंड दे गो अवे बट समटाइम्स दे लास्ट फॉर अ लिटिल लॉन्ग और इफ यू आर इन अ डेजर्ट एरिया जहां रेत वगैरह है और जहाँ हवा काफी उड़ती है यू नो वी हम लोग ढक के जाते हैं ना ताकि हम लोग जो उड़ती हुई मिट्टी को सूंघे नहीं बस मामला कुछ ऐसा ही है तो कुछ दिन के लिए इफ यू प्रैक्टिस ऑल दिस इट विल बी यू नो यूजफुल सो वी कीप इट सिंपल एंड दैट्स द काइंड ऑफ अप्रोच दैट वी यूज दैट As we are approaching uh, towards the end of this program, may I request the organizers again to save uh, all the stuff on chat. and except for the unable to hear anything and and thank you uh, and uh, uh, did dr shekhar learn train how to speak or or <laughs> does he know how, how to speak uh, it, it, it is not let me tell you it is god gifted let me tell you <laughs> and my lovely and good friend dr suresh kota who has always been such a good friend and always so positive says nahi nahi hamesha acha bolta tha <laughs> sir so one, one one question if you can take we have been discussing a lot about the national education policy and all yep. but what about the uncertainty in the exams why is the government or maybe the advisors not giving a concrete or a clear cut direction okay the next six months you are not going to have exam like like neat neat was cancelled two days before or one day two days before it was supposed to be held you know, that is that is almost like a knee jerk reaction let, let us look at the mental health aspect of the doctors who are going to be a front line people you are they don't know when it is going to be held why the exams is going to be held after august 31st children 10th class board exams 12th class board exams you know why why can't somebody people say and tell let let they be postponed for 6 months or a year let it let let us err on the side of caution why why this uncertainty aren't we creating this uncertainty in our children all of us well, yeah those uh, decisions amrit are being taken uh, slowly for example Uh, in many states it's already been announced that uh, the first pu people are going to be promoted to second pu without any exams that uh, because education is a state uh, subject other than central boards and 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 collegiate education and all of that but as we speak many of these decisions are being taken um, our systems of governance are quite complex uh, amrit and you know many decisions uh you know go through various bodies and 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 various ratifying bodies and so on uh i think that people are trying to fast track many of this and you know kind of make the balance uh so yes uh, these decisions are being made and they are being put out in in many states and from many central boards but so that that, that would be my response um i also wanted to say that uh, i've been told by fabian that the ips task force for covid mental health is meeting tomorrow along with the ips uh, disaster management task force and the ips media task force at 8 am tomorrow on media matters and mental health it's called the good bad and the ugly so a lot of stuff uh, thanks fabian for that uh, it's, uh, so we will be hopefully we would have some kind of, uh, stuff on that Dr. Roop Sidana wanted to. He wanted one minute, sir. He's a senior uh, secretary, sir. Sure. Dr. Roop, sir. I think uh, Dr. Uh, Shekhar Shachadri has already told the IPS task force on COVID-19 and the IPS task force on disaster management, along with the media and mental health subcommittee of IPS. We are all 
getting together to have a webinar tomorrow at 8 p.m. on YouTube and Facebook Live. And uh, we would invite all these people to join us and we can get some of the answers that media guidelines or media and mental health. We will have a person from the media and we have invited other people from media to join us tomorrow at 8 p.m. So my personal invitation to all and uh, to Shekhar Sheshadri, I, whenever I listen to him, it seems it's a musical discourse rather than a talk or a lecture. It's always so soothing and pleasurable to listen to you, Dr. Shekhar Shishadri. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you, Rook, sir. Thank you, Rook, sir. And sir, congrats to Khan, sir. Uh, we are able to promote other events as well. So congratulations to you also. <laughs> Thank you. Alim, we have an interesting question from Dr. Munda. If you can take it. Sure. Amrit, Amrit, go ahead. Sir, so many we, always look for, we always look for certainty in our lives. So, is there a direct relationship between our need for certainty and our intolerance of uncertainty? Yes. Uh, you know, there are sort of, shall we say, two sides of the, of the same coin that... Uh, Everybody, you know, uh, umid hoti hai na, khushali ki uh, rashi paise bhi aayenge, uh, achha partner bhi milega, or you know, swasth bhi achha rahega. You know, it's like a doctor thinking ki the patient must come and give his symptoms unambiguously. A diagnosis must be easily available. There must be easy medicine. He should take the medicine without asking too many questions. Uh, he should improve immediately and he should be ever grateful uh, for what I did and, and pay the necessary money to my receptionist. If medicine was so simple, uh, it, it's never so simple, you know, because complications occur that. Uh, so, yes, there are two sides of the same uh, coin. And the, the, the more intense our need for certainty and the more intolerance we have for uh, that combination is like you know the irresistible force meeting the immovable object uh, so so to speak and and that's where uh, many people have said on chat ki jeevan ko hum agar saralta se jiye that we sometimes complicate our lives that you know and and the simplicity of uh, if we discover the simplicity of our lives uh, as a child does in a discarded toffee wrapper a discarded toffee wrapper is just a plaything for a child because it has texture, it has sound, and it takes flight when you throw it. Or kya chahiye? Kimti khilone thodi chahiye that. So, to saral jivan ko apnaye aur saralta se agar ham jivan ko jiye, to jivan ki chunotiya aur chetil taaye jo hain, usse ham jood sakte hain. Correct. And sir, just let me just add. Uh, Shekhar sir has kindly agreed to be with us again on uh, 20th. 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 So we, on that day, we'll talk about many questions in the chat box that were there about uh, grief and loss. If you yes. have lost a relative, uh, if you have lost a family member, <laughs> what to do? Parents, uh, ch uh, children have lost their parents. So so uh, we'd like to promote our own event also. Here. And how to talk to somebody who has lost some lo lost yeah. somebody is close to us. Right. Maybe a kid who comes with so that's what we have been discussing, Dr. Shekhar. With this pandemic is actually taking a lot of young people with it. And the next next wave will, will hit us harder. So sir, let sir, us be prepared emotionally. Yeah. Uh, sir, regarding this acceptance of eventuality, acceptance of the conditions, is So this acceptance approaches. Uh, the good and bad of it. Yeah, mindfulness based and acceptance based therapy is part of this whole new wave uh, uh, CBT. One must understand that there is a difference between uh, uh, nuanced uh, or uh, empowered ac acceptance versus a resigned. Uh, it's a question of how the narrative is structured in the mind. कि कर भी क्या सकते हैं अपनाना तो पड़ेगा कोई मजबूरी है as opposed to saying कि ये रीत है और चुनौतियां हैं और 
इसे मैं अपना लू तो इट्स बेटर फॉर मी इट्स बेटर फॉर माई मेंटल हेल्थ दैट so there there are many kinds of acceptance that so is it is it a resigned hopeless acceptance or is it a more informed and a nuanced and an empowered ex- acceptance and that's where the therapeutic approach is to to shift someone from this position of resignation uh, you know makes so i will hand it over to you now to uh, close the session <coughs> so so one last statement dr ruma has said i am certain at last it's not difficult to fall in love with this i hand it over to the chairperson sir <laughs> chairperson sir <laughs> yeah i think uh uh what can i say i think the time uh we we have so many more questions it has been right from acceptance mindfulness and uh, i think the, the I, i'd like to especially not just i'd like to thank the speaker but i'd like to uh, thank all the people who have given their very very important inputs their queries their curiosities uh, thank you very much and with that uh, i'd like to hand it over to dr tofan patik dr dr shobit ah yes shobit. sir i would like to Uh, just sir uh, from the uh, fantastic deliberation with dr shishadri sir has given that i would like to call this virus as a piece of bad news wrapped in a protein you know pushing a scientific committee into an uncertainty and throwing a lot of scientific uh, shadow pandemic uh, the most common being women and children so we have to fight this with this complex humanitarian crisis with a lot of solidarity thank you sir thank you so much i would like to hand over the moderate uh, to tofan doctor tofan sir doctor tofan sir thank you everybody so because all of us are living through this pan- pandemic or i have got a personal reflection i will take two minutes to have my reflections and uh, i will refer to the comments made by dr subhid gar in respect of spanish flu 1918 i do believe and it is a fact then the condition was more gloomy 500 million people at that point of time which is one third of the world's population were affected around 50 million people expired and that too in the background this pandemic started in february 1918 and the world war 1 ended in september in november 1918 all these days people are suffering and facing both the catastrophes and still the war did not end one has to be positive and now the for the thing what is uh, complicating or what is adding to the problem or adding to the solutions also is information overload maybe at that point of time general people did not know that so many people are dying in america so many people are dying in brazil and this can be the reason tomorrow you may be there and they were uh, being laid on the london streets that i have seen a movie long back uh and uh, this 19 spanish flu i don't remember that the theme is that people uh, the warrior the soldiers are returning to london to find this in a bad state after the war because this flu was there up to 1920 so this information overload is also making confusion and adding to the mental stress it is not only in lighting it is not not educating simultaneously it is uh, ending in confusion quoted documents having some reference to somewhere are telling diverse things and the general public are getting that through the social media group and every day i am getting minimum 15 16 calls kya hai baat what is the thing but i do believe we have to have some positivity the world is not bleaker in compared to 1918 one third of the world's population are not yet affected and all the virus attacks that has been there which have been a challenge for the mankind have taken their course it will take its toll the third wave will come spanish flu had four waves the fourth wave may come but we have to be positive and we have to move in the right direction it is good we are having information technology to inform us but it should not be utilized in an adverse way and what was raised by abri about uh, some guidelines for the mass media to convey to the people 
as well as to control the social media has to be there so that people do not become frightened. This is my view. With this view, I compliment Dr. Sesadri and we will have, maybe we will need two more sessions on and grief and the other to deal with the chat box questions. With a lot of thanks to Dr. Sesadri, if you want, she can comment on my view. Otherwise, we will see it in the next time. And uh, Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Yeah. Amrit, uh, the, yeah. the... I have a question. question. I'll, take a, I'll take one question, sir. Sir, Dr. Sanghamitra Pati is here. She is the head of ICMR of Odisha, sir. She, she leads the, you know, all the COVID challenges and all. And basically, because it's done by the Odisha Psychiatric Society and she, is, she, helps, she, she works a lot with our psychiatrists. So this was a question, sir, and I would just request you to hear the question. Maybe you can address it in the next session. So greetings, I'm Sangamitra Pati from ICMR. She heads the ICMR here. How do we address pandemic fatigue and resilience building in such surging waves of pandemic? How can psychiatrists guide the policy makers and public? So I, I don't know whether uh, pandemic fatigue and resilience building in healthcare providers or in general public or those who are positive, I'm presuming she's talking about healthcare providers. Right. And uh, so th there is a different me method to deal with. Uh, and um, this is what hospital administrations and health administrators do. So that's why we have duty rosters and you know, and anyone who works in emergency, uh, there is a protocol that any emergency worker has to mandatory go on what is called as RNR, rest and relaxation. They'll say, no, 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 I want to work. And they say, no, go off for one week. No phone calls, come back after one week. So there are many such things that uh, you know really help. And, and this is the rule in most international agencies that work with uh, Baki psychiatrists, guiding policymakers in public. Uh, you'd be interested to know that Samvad, the project that I'm running on child protection and mental health, uh, works in four verticals, mental health, uh, care and protection, education, and policy and law. Is the first time in the history of NIMHANS and in the history of psychiatry that a project in a mainstream hospital has a vertical on policy and law. So, and I know that IPS has a, a, a section that, and, and IPS has in the past worked on policy and law issues. They, they did it in the context of the Mental Health Act. They did it in the context of suicide, which was punishable uh, by offense later. They did it for section 377 on sexuality minorities. So. Uh, uh, IPS has a track record of, uh, of working on issues of policy and law. Thank you, sir. So with this, we come to an end to the Thursday Musings 41st edition. I would like to compliment uh, Dr. Shashadri with a comment I got in the personal chat box. Was What it ended, I was so lost, the way he talks. You just want him to keep going on and on. His voice, though. So that was the comment I just wanted to end your talk with, sir. Thank you so much. Lovely, wonderful. You know, you know if, if somebody asks me who's who your favorite speaker, no hostages taken. You are it, sir. Thank you so much. Thank you, Dr. Gupta, sir. People, you know, we love your accent, sir. The way you speak, you know, people have been asking me, sir, ko kya America se laya hai? No, he's our own Indian throwbread man. So thank you. No, for I was actually, I was actually, I was actually brought up in US. I was in <laughs> US for eight years. <laughs> <laughs> That's so right. Now, Alim was having a complex. I, we belong to the same place. We eat the same food. How can sir speak so well? So thank you so Hi, much. Sir. Alim, Alim is wonderful. wonderful. <laughs> Alim is wonderful. Thank you. Shobit, you created a new wave, the, the Spanish wave. Uh, the only mm. Spanish wave I heard was Barcelona, Messi, and you know, Madrid. So. Wonderful having you, a dear friend. Sobit is a wonderful man. Thank you, Thank you, Tofan, sir, for encouraging everyone. IPS Odisha State Branch, Alim, our backroom, Sharda, Sazia, and Rucha, Torrent, and a whole bunch of you know supporters, viewers who egg us on, who give us ideas, who, who, who just don't let us let our guards down. Thank you so much. So we wanted to end the session with a very, very, it's a request by many of the viewers who did not put it on the chat box because tomorrow, you know, the Bombay Psychiatric Society is doing something for, you know, but everybody wanted Dr. Shekhar, Shekhar Sashadri to sing a small song for three minutes. There's a small request from everybody. 
दो मिनट का एक गाना सर से सुनेंगे और खत्म करेंगे सर आज का सेशन इफ यू डोंट माइंड सर सॉरी तो मैं तो हमें हमेशा एक एक ही गाना गाता हूँ विच इज अबाउट हाउ वी कैन क्रिएट न्यू मेमोरीज फॉर फॉर चिल्ड्रन इवन द कोविड सो दैट फाइव इयर्स और टेन इयर्स फ्रॉम नाउ यू नो दे रिमेम्बर सो दैट्स सर एक अच्छा गाना है एक एक सम द द रॉकिंग टाइप नॉट द यू नो सीरियस टाइप सो वी हैव हैड टू मिनट्स एंड वी विल क्लोज इट जोश वाला सर जोश जोश वाला सर एक मजा है मजा आएगा यू नो एवरीबॉडी इज डाउन सर यू नो एवरी द शोल्डर्स आर ड्रूपिंग यू नो एवरीबॉडी इज डाउन सर वी वांट समथिंग टू पेपर्स अप एंड देन वी कैन हैव अ गुड डिनर uh hindi mein ya angrezi mein dono mein ek ek sir ho jayega we don't why will we hey, disappoint any anyone? anything you prefer we, we can have both sir you. we can have both sir five minutes won't change as much dono ka sir ek hindi ek english dil ka haal sunne dil wala दिल का हाल सुने दिल वाला सीधी सी बात न मिर्ची मसाला कहने वाला दिल का हाल सुने दिल वाला <laughs> चलिए थैंक यू सर थैंक यू सर थैंक यू सो मच सर ऑल राइट थैंक यू थैंक यू वेरी मच सर गुड नाइट एवरीवन गुड नाइट गुड नाइट गुड नाइट सर गुड नाइट नाइट हैविंग ऑल ऑफ यू हैव अ सेफ वीकेंड